Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Today we're looking at villains in a more general sense. They say a hero is only as good as the villains they fight, or at least only as interesting. These heroes all have excellent rogues galleries, some who fans would argue are more interesting than the heroes themselves, or at least take the heroes up to a whole other level. I'm Sasha and these are the top 10 superheroes with the best supervillains, aka rogues galleries. So for this you have to have more than one cool villain, gotta be multiple. Let's do this. Number 10, the Daredevil. Daredevil often gets overlooked when it comes to having cool villains, because many of his villains are associated with other heroes as well, or they have been depicted as such in other adaptations. But Daredevil has deep ties to Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, and has had some devastating battles with him. He also has had extensive dealings with the Purple Man, who in the modern era is much more known for his abuse of Jessica Jones, but in comics she was just a distraction and ultimately a pawn in his battle against the Daredevil. Daredevil also crosses paths with the insane assassin Bullseye, who is so skilled he can kill a man with a roll of toilet paper. And of course there is his moral battle with his sometimes ally, sometimes enemy, the Punisher. His creation of the villainous Typhoid Mary, his love with the anti-hero Elektra, his battle against the villainous association, the Hand. All in all, it's a wonder Matt Murdock finds the time to be a lawyer and a vigilante, let alone take down all these villains. It's a lot of a lot. Number 9, Thor. The Asgardian may not be a character who leaps to the forefront of all fans' minds when it comes to villains, but he has a unique villain group centralized around him and mythology. This gives him a strong position to operate from, interestingly independently as well as connected to the large Marvel Universe. Thor of course has the dastardly Loki, his brother, to contend with, but he must also deal with other mythological gods and beasts like the Midgard Serpent, or somebody like Loki's daughter Hela, people like the Enchantress who is also in love with him. With Thor you also get to up the power scale of his villains because he is a god, so that means he can be battling the Absorbing Man one day and the Celestials the next. Thor is a bit lower cause some may not gel with his villains if they are not as into mythology, but that doesn't mean that they still aren't a strong catalog, unique to the God of Thunder. Number 8, Green Lantern. We're going to start this off with the Silver Age Green Lantern Hal Jordan who funnily enough would garner a reputation for being boring, despite essentially being a space cop which should be ripe for all kinds of adventures. Some of Hal's villains would grow cooler over time, like Sinestro. Sinestro gained a whole bunch more cred upon Rebirth. More than he had at the start anyway, he always had the bones though. And when the reins were passed, Green Lantern wise that is, to Kyle, John Guy and more, this only grew. Hal would start off with villains like Hector Hammond, a psychic who would grow jealous of him and also have a giant bulbous head. Star Sapphire, his on again off again girlfriend who would try to kill him initially when she transformed. But where Hal would really come to shine was with Rebirth, his Rebirth, not the comic arc with DC. With this Rebirth would come new Lantern Cores, the Red Lanterns of Rage, the Black Lanterns of Death, and the disgusting new Black Hand revamp. Even Parallax would go from being Hal to being an entity possessing him. Plus of course the foes that all the Lanterns would face in space, and for a time even the Guardians themselves. Number 7, The Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four are Marvel first family, and as a result actually ushered in some of the biggest threats in the Marvel Universe that they have ever known. Some have become so well established that some forget that they were ever originally fighting the Fantastic Four. Of course most remember their connection with Doom, the bitter rivalry between Reed and Victor, which will never not be glorious. But the Fantastic Four are also the first to encounter and defeat Galactus, discover the war between the Skrulls and the Kree, reintroduce Namor to modern continuity after he had languished in the gap between the Gold and Silver Ages. Don't laugh, but also people like Mole Man and Pastepot Pete. They had their day. Some of these villains have faded because the star of the Fantastic Four has faded, but hopefully Marvel's first family will rise again. Number 6, Spawn. Spawn first debuted in Spawn number 1 back in 1992, a creation of famed Spider-Man artist Todd McFarlane. Spawn managed to establish himself as a gritty anti-hero with a host of intriguing villains, all with either disturbing twisted motivations or dark looks. The demented clown, the violator, Malaboglia, who I can never say, Malabolgia, the master of hell, Mammon, another lord of hell. If you love demonic presences, Spawn is definitely a series to check out. It recently at the time of this recording crossed its 300th issue. Spawn would also, well, spawn spin-off characters, hunting him down such as Angela. There are a whole host of indie comics with their own universes that can sometimes get buried, but that doesn't mean they aren't worth checking out. Number 5, X-Men. 
The X-Men also have placed the Marvel Universe in peril with their wide array of villains. The X-Men give the world Magneto, the Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver, who would later transition over to being heroes. The terrifying Immortal Apocalypse, the diabolical Mr. Sinister, the Hellfire Club, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, later just the Brotherhood of Mutants. And that is to say nothing of the humans who hate them as well, such as William Stryker and Bolivar Trask. The X-Men occupy a unique position in the Marvel Universe, which at times would even pit them against other Marvel heroes. The X-Men's villains have become part of a fabric of the world much like the Fantastic Fours, though their villainy tends to be a bit more targeted. Number 4. Wolverine Now some of you may be saying, Wolverine is on the X-Men. Yes, yes he is. But he also is one of the most popular. In fact, one of, if not the only member who can consistently have a solo series without it being cancelled. Wolverine also has a whole host of people who hate just him, specifically, but will be happy to also fight the X-Men and other people, I guess, if they're there. Wolverine has to contend with former peers and rivals from the Weapon X program, such as Sabretooth and Omega Red, past lady loves such as Lady Deathstrike, people from his past in Japan like the Silver Samurai. Wolverine is long-lived and as a result has racked up many enemies, even some of his own children, such as some with names that no one can pronounce people yell at you if you try. These extra foes give Wolverine a little something extra in the villain department. Number 3. The Flash The Flash may be the fastest man alive, but he also has one of the most recognizable rogues galleries even spanning back to the Golden Age. I see you, The Shade. The Flash has an interesting group of rogues in that they often work together, and not all of them hate The Flash, and a lot of them actually have a mantra against killing. In fact, The Flash and them actually talk sometimes. They threw him a party once. It was sweet. Barry was just that friendly, and Wally was to an extent as well. So let's meet some of these rogues. Captain Cold, Mirror Master, Heat Wave, Weather Wizard, Gorilla Grodd, The Thinker, the list goes on. And then of course the people who really hate him. I mean, Grodd kind of hates him. But the infamous Reverse Flash. The Flash's villains are iconic and have only become more so as they have made their way into popular culture in a big way. They definitely helped elevate The Flash, who in the Silver Age when he was Barry also was accused of being boring through the Bronze Age until he died. While some may disagree, this was a complaint from the time. Wally, conversely, was very well received, especially in the 90s, which is why it made total sense that they just took the role away from him and gave it back to Barry, because it's classic Flash. And then they used all the villain development that had occurred for Barry and used Wally's plots to beef up the CW show, pretending they were Barry's. I mean, not the trial though. That was 100% Barry. Snap that neck. Not salty at all. Number two, Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man. He just has the worst luck and some of the best villains. Well, really just supporting cast. His villains are second to none, managing to be both menacing and intriguing despite not sounding like they should be. Villains like the Rhino and Electro or Dr. Octopus or Mysterio, who may sound silly on paper, but it provides some entertaining storylines. And over the years, Spider-Man's villains list has only grown, adding the likes of Venom, Kraven the Hunter, clones, so many clones, classics again like the Green Goblin. Spider-Man's villains tend to follow a theme, focusing largely but not exclusively on science gone wrong, turning yourself into a lizard or horrible goblin creature. Still, Spidey isn't just known for his villains, and people don't often say they'd rather read about them than him. The same cannot be said for our number one. I think you know who it is. You were waiting. Obvious, yet deserved. In our number one spot, we have Batman. Batman is some of the most iconic villains out there, and has since his inception. The Joker, Catwoman, the Scarecrow, Hugo Strange, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, even further down the list to the likes of the Riddler and beyond. And more have still been being added, who have come to become phenomenons in their own right, such as Bane or Harley Quinn, the Court of Owls even. On top of this, Batman's villains tend to be unique from one another. They have different motivations, and he has a complex relationship with all of them. They have grown and changed over time. Look at Mr. Freeze. And most can stand on their own and have had minis or solo outings. As mentioned, there are some who say that they would rather read about these characters than the Dark Knight himself. Are you one of them? So those were 10 superheroes with the best supervillains. Did you feel anybody was missing? Who is your fave? Let me know down below. I'm Sasha and thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.